Don't forget to subscribe! This is what happened when Gabe sent me this two days ago. Back when Alexa was on Zoe 101, as we all know, Jamie Lee accused her of bullying her. She went to Brittany and told Alexa was bullying her. And Brittany went to the set and she had an assistant to get Alexa to the trailer to bring her to JL's trailer. So they lied and told Alexa and her mom who was with her that Alexa was needed hair and makeup. So her mom was told her that she could go ahead and go. And when Ian Jordan called her, he instead took her to JL's trailer where she found JL and Brittany waiting for her. And she walked in. JL immediately ran to a back room of the trailer and shut herself inside a room. Brittany yelled at Alexa and told her she would never, she would make sure Alexa never worked again because she was bullying her sister. So, Alexa got physically sick while Brittany was yelling at her and she actually threw up and Brittany was visibly disgusted with her. So yeah, obviously the girl has a right to be traumatized by that. Brittany handled it very poorly. She should have spoken to Alexa's mother and let Alexa tell her side of the story before immediately believing Judas. But Brittany was very overprotective over her sister. Probably because she knew the industry can destroy people's psyche. Let's take a look at this Instagram interview video and let's hear what Alexa has to say. I guess, okay, continued. So, 13 year old me. So, I'm like, picture 13 year old Alexa. I'm seeing it. Yeah. 13 year old Alexa. Um, I like walk in and I think, like, oh, maybe I'm supposed to like sit on the couch and like wait for her because like she ran to the back. This is a completely empty large trailer with the first AD by her side. No, the first AD left me. You just opened the door. You told me to go in there. Just go in there. With no guardian. Okay. That's what's, and that's, you can't do that. I'm so, sad. so there was no, you walked in, no one's in there. No one's in there. Well, okay. no, Jamie ran across. I right. Said, I, you saw someone run to the back. You saw her run and to I the back. And I felt like it was Jamie, yeah. Okay. And then I like sat down. Yeah. I remember just going, okay, maybe she has to go change really quickly because we are about to go on set. So like, I was just like, okay, maybe that's just the case. And she like ran to the back and then I sat down and I'm just like waiting, you know, for her to come out. And I was like, Jamie. And then all of a sudden, I'll never forget the image because like Brittany just like came out and she was like kind of in just like a bra let kind of uh, like thing. And you, you can sit down there if you want and just like zoom into us. If you don't have to stand, go back where you stand. Um, she like just ran at me and uh, I don't want to go at you. Yeah, like this close and started like berating me and telling me that I, that she was going to make sure that nothing came of my career and that um, she was going to make sure of it and that nobody messes with her sister. And the whole time I'm just thinking Victoria in my head because I'm like, how does she think I never wanted to mess with her sister, you know, like I never like there's no messing with her sister. Like there's never been a conflict. It's just like I've been trying to be friends with her and I've gotten no results from it, you know? And she was like, Nobody messes with my sister and she's screaming at me and then I start like getting sick to my stomach and I start to puke a little bit. And I tried to like run to the door and like she's blocking and she's still yelling at me and I like freeze up and it's like horrified by the whole experience and I don't know what to do. And then at the same time I'm thinking in my head like, oh I loved Britney Spears when I was younger and like she was somebody I looked up to at that time so like to have her not like me felt awful. Like I also was like maybe I'm not somebody that should be liked because if like my idol from when I was younger doesn't like me, like that sucks. Like, what a horrible feeling. So like all these things are going through my head, I'm like what did I do wrong, like trying to figure it out and then she was kind of grossed out by like me being sick and like I was begging her to like get out of there and she like finally like unlocked me and she's like go. And I like ran to my train, like I remember like not being able to like see anything, it was just like everything was like super blurry. I was like walking, I was running to the trailer and I ran in and like, right to the toilet and I started puking. And my mom's like, what the hell is going on? And she like, comes behind me and she's like, Alexa, tell me what's going on. And I was like trying to find the words, but I couldn't find any. Like everything was coming out as gibberish. And it's horrible. At what point in the horrible. season was this? Like, like Season two. But this like, is spring break, I think. I think it was called the spring break. I was like, oh, no, 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 no
Just give her some space, Gucci. Surprisingly enough, it was our last day. It was your last day of shooting. Which is basically what Shepard and Spears was like telling me. It was like, after this, you're done. Right. Like, and I then make sure that nothing happens. And you. then tell me about the experience when you were taken into the boardroom at Nickelodeon. I'm so sorry. So, well, let me rewind a little bit because I want to get to Dan. Okay. Um, so my mom's, my poor mom, like, I hope there's like some mom out there, like understands, like if your daughter comes in and she's like throwing up and like, you have no idea where she just was. And like, my mom was so scared for me. It was so, I will never forget my mom's face because she just didn't know what happened to me, you know? And so she, I remember her like opening like the trailer and she was like screaming like Ian and like screaming Dan and just like screaming anybody like what happened to my daughter, you know? And I, she's yeah. like, she can't talk. And so then Ian's nowhere to be seen. Ian flees. <laughs> Ian, <laughs> fucking Ian. Just, like, Ian dipped just dipped out. out. Ian like knew what he just did. And he was like, listen, I'm out of here. Like, I, you know, and he was really close friends with the Spears. Like, he was very close with them. I'm pretty sure, like, they even hired. Like, they were very close. And so he just dipped. He was gone. So my mom was like, anybody. So then there was, like, an other, like, PA or somebody. I was like, what's going on? Like, I had no idea what was going on. And my mom was like, can you please get Dan? Get Dan here immediately. Get the producers here immediately. Someone needs to figure out what just happened to my daughter. So the PA is like, sure, okay. And like, they're all in their walkie talkies. And like, you can just hear the chaos through like the walkies. It's just like, find Dan, find this person. And we waited for a while. And the whole time my mom's like, what happened? I couldn't really tell her what happened. And I was like, I kind of almost want to wait because I want, I wanted, I remember hear, like hearing it in my mind. Like I finally want the adults on the show to like understand what I'm going through. Like now this has escalated too far for me. Like I'm hoping somebody's gonna come now and be like, let's solve this problem. It's gone too far. Someone's being bullied on a regular basis. They've come out to you, like, you know, they've reached for help multiple times and like now it's gone too far. So one of the executives comes in and they're just like so cocky. Like the way they come in like with their like Ray-Bans and they're just like, <laughs> so, like they just like come in like what's going on here you know what I mean it's like kind of like CSI Miami like when he like like dips down like the sunglasses like comes through and he's like what's going on like doesn't really care you know he's just like getting paid he just wants to be in and out like let's get to set it's kind of his mo like I understand that's how they're trained like let's just get this moving and I'm like sick and my mom's telling him the scenario and like, saying like she won't say what's happening so then finally Dan walks in and Dan has not helped the entire time and I don't feel comfortable going into details about what I've seen with Dan or like what Dan is, but he comes through and with a smirk on his face. And because he's known the entire time that it was leading to this, he could have prevented this. Like he could have stepped in and been like, let's be friends here We're on a kid's show. Like, let's be adult, like, even though we're kids, like let's, an adult should step in and be like, let's be friends. Like, how can we settle this? But no, that never happened. And so Dan comes in with like a smirk on his face but he always had with me, not a nice guy. He comes in, he's like, what's going on? What happened to Alexa? Oh no, sorry, he goes, what happened now with you, Alexa? As if it's my fault, like immediately. And I finally start to blurt out like what happened and like what happened when I went into the trailer and what happened. And he was like, you have to go on set. You have to film this last scene. And like, had no care. He's like, but I have something for you that would probably make you feel better. And I remember being like, what? Like, that's his response? Like, I'm throwing up here. Like, I'm sick to my stomach, this is awful. And his response that I need to get to set and that, you know, he has something for me that's cool. And he just pulls out, you know those like portable DVD players that you could like put a DVD in and watch? Yes. He like pulled, like his assistant like passes me this DVD thing. And I'm just like sitting on the floor like, I'm in the closet area, actually, because I was, like, so scared I was in the closet area. I'm, like, looking at this DVD player going, like, this fucking DVD player means nothing to me, dude. Like, what? So strange. He's like, he's like, okay, so now go on set, and let's finish this scene, and we'll talk about this later. And so yet again, as a kid, I have to, like, be professional, even though I'm distraught and horrified, and literally want to never see the face. Like, I don't want to see the day ever again. Go on set. Everyone's being horrible to me. They start like shooting these water guns at me because like all the cast members had like water guns. And before we even started filming, they're like shooting water guns at me and laughing at me. 
They went like after they knew, because Jamie definitely knew what was going on. It was just horrible. And I'm like humiliated, just sitting there, like have to pretend like I'm Nicole, who's like smiley and bubbly, and like loves everybody doing that. It's like a long-winded thing, I'm sorry. But so then afterwards, the execs call my mom and they're like, let's sit down with Alexa and you know, hear her side of the story and like what happened and blah blah blah. And so my mom calls my lawyer, which I find out later was in cahoots with Nickelodeon. So she would, didn't have my best interest in mind. Um, and they're like, yeah, just go and meet up with the execs. It's going to be totally fine. We get to Nickelodeon on sunset and there's all the execs there, including Dan. And they ask my mom if I can go in there alone. And my mom goes, no, absolutely not. And I remember going like, yeah, mom. I'm like. She's not gonna like leave me, leave my side. Like I'm yeah. not afraid to be around any more adult. I'm, I'm afraid. And my mom goes, I have to call her lawyer first. We call my lawyer, and she ends up telling us that it's okay for me to go in there alone. Like, oh, it's fine. Nothing's gonna happen to Alexa. Like the adults are gonna handle this professionally. Like I kept hearing that word, professional, professional, professional. Everyone's gonna handle it professionally. Everyone has to handle things professionally. None of that was ever happening. And so she was like, don't worry, like Dan's in there, the execs, et cetera, like you're gonna be okay. And I was like, mom, I really don't wanna go in there lunch. Like I promise, like, these are adults now. Like you're not dealing with Jamie, you're not dealing with, like Dan's sometimes mean, like, uh, but like he has other people around him now. So everyone will be keeping a watch on this situation, this dialogue. And I go in there and they literally sit me purposely. Here's a huge table that can see like Jesus and his disciples that just like goes across and then they have like one chair for me on the other side. And I'm like, I go sit down Alexa. And literally the chair was too big for me. I felt so small. I have like, like five people in front of me that are all adults that are like Viacom and Nickelodeon and Dan's right in the middle. So like directly across from me, does not look happy. Um, and basically they just went on this, this whole thing that I, you know, it's not Nicole 101, it's called Zoe 101. If I wanted my own show, I should have gotten, get like when got one. Um, I have to basically be nice to the, I have to like handle whatever the lead character is dealing with because I'm a side character and I don't matter when it comes to like in industry terms. Um, I have to put on a good face, like I can't take both, it just like, it went on and on and on, like maybe there was some truth in what, like Dan was like, maybe there's some truth in what Brittany said, like maybe you shouldn't be in this industry, like maybe it's too much for you, like you can't handle it. It's like fucked up shit, like really, really, and it was like for 20 minutes I'm crying there just listening to all these adults like tell me that I don't really matter, that I shouldn't have been in the industry to begin with, that I don't really have a voice, that everything that I felt is irrelevant, basically, and that I need to be professional and just suck it up. And that's it. And he was like, well, who knows what's gonna happen to you? And then he started, they started telling me like, do you know what happens to kids stars? Like nothing ends up happening with them. Like your, your only chance is like continuing the show for a while because like after you're not on it, like people fall off. And it was just like this brainwashing, like just making me feel like completely nothing. I was just like, nothing, nothing. I feel like nothing. Anyways, I like left, I left the room and I was crying. I told my mom I never want to be around those people ever again. I felt absolutely horrible. I knew I was going to have like, I already knew then in some way or another that I was in years of therapy or something because that was just awful experience. I felt like nothing. I felt horrible. I felt really low. The moral of the story is don't argue. Will, with the staff, grow up and be brave and get help and seek justice not vengeance. Yes, we must reward the innocent and punish the guilty. We must never, never give up. We also must stick together at a time like this. Good night, and God help us all. <laughs>